All right, we're back. It's Monday evening, the 24th of February, and this is Weather for Weather Geeks, the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. Let's get right to it this evening. We actually have a lot to talk about this week after a pretty quiet stretch of weather at the end of last week and into the weekend. Today in weather history, this is a notable date in weather history because in recent history, we've had some warm weather in late February. And three years ago on this date, the warmest February day on record in our area at the Youngstown Ward Airport hit it 75 degrees three years ago today. This was two years after we had 10 below zero in that very brutal February of 2015. Sundays, Mondays, Tuesdays, those have been the days this month. The latter portions of the week have all been cooler this month, but uh, late in the weekend, early in the week, all above average, including today we hit 53 uh, this afternoon, our uh, third warmest temperature in the month of February, trailing only the third and fourth of the month. We have some rain pushing in this evening. Some of this not quite reaching the ground, but some of it's going to start reaching the ground here before too much longer, and uh, rain will settle in for parts of the uh, night tonight. This is a big sprawling system, low pressure situated over the Tennessee Valley. Uh, you could probably analyze a warm front up here like this. And uh, nothing to write home here about uh, with the rain tonight. It's going to be mostly on the light side and primarily focused over the next handful of hours. I think things will become a little more eh, intermittent or scattered in nature as we go towards tomorrow morning. Not expecting it to be doing a whole lot as Tuesday gets underway. And that'll be the story, I think, for a lot of the morning and midday hours. The rain probably becomes most likely once again in the afternoon on Tuesday, but we are on the warm side of this system for now. No snow issues here locally. It'll be a different story out towards Chicago, Fort Wayne, Grand Rapids. And then for us, as we go to the day Wednesday now, our in-house model here, I think, is being a little bit too aggressive in pushing the colder air too far to the south and east here on Wednesday. Taken literally, it would suggest we'll, we're seeing some snowflakes already before the morning is through. I don't think that's right. I, I do think that uh, we'll hang on to the liquid precipitation through the daylight hours Wednesday. It's later Wednesday into the evening hours that I think this is generally right. This is when the cold air pushes in. And we'll see a changeover to some wet snow at first, and then it'll become kind of the drier, fluffier snow as the Arctic air pushes in as we go through the overnight. We're going to get into kind of a lake-enhanced or lake-effect regime late Wednesday night and heading into the day on Thursday. Of course, Lake Erie is wide open, no ice. And so these bands will uh, probably deposit some snow, enough to measure, I think, in a lot of the snow belts. And it's certainly going to be windy and colder wind uh, gusts during the course of thursday probably 30 to at times maybe 35 or even 40 perhaps up to 50 or so in the higher terrain off to the east if you're heading on i-80 or the pa turnpike east across pa uh, definitely some higher winds up there in the mountains for us gusts to 30 or 40 pretty likely that's going to create some pretty nasty wind chills considering it was 53 today in just a few days we're gonna have afternoon wind chills around 10. That'll about do it. And then uh, wind chills Thursday night into Friday morning down into the single digits. Again, I think this is probably enough snow to measure uh, north of I-80 and especially up into the primary snow belts of eastern Cuyahoga, Lake Geauga, Ashtabula counties, Erie County, PA, Crawford County, PA, probably parts of Trumbull and Mercer. Uh, this will be enough to measure as well. Uh, I suspect it's not a whole lot to write home about as far as amounts go once you get down into Mahoning, Lawrence, and Columbiana counties with the lake enhancements late in the week. Now, this is going to be legit cold for four days. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then the pattern flips again. And this is the 8 to 14 day outlook, and we revert right back to the mean winter pattern. Warm in the eastern U.S. And, uh, you know, looking at the longer range, I, I put this on social earlier, the, the kind of cold we're going to have at the end of this week into the weekend, it may be the last, hey, the air hurts my face <laughs> kind of cold that we're going to have this winter. Because here's the European weeklies. Uh, we get these sets of uh, modeling, uh, the set of modeling twice a week, Monday nights and Thursday nights. And this uh, temperature map compared to average for around uh, the first week of March, no cold there. And then as we go to the second week of March, no cold there. It's all in the West. And, you know, just I'm going to start, you know, really leaning towards the idea that uh, that uh, harsh winter, true winter, after we get done with the cold late this week and this weekend, we can probably just about say that the the fat lady singing on air hurts my face kind of winter weather does it mean we're done seeing snowflakes no wouldn't predict that on the 24th of february uh does it mean we're not going to see cold again this year no i wouldn't say that but but you know wind chills in the lower teens and temperatures in the 20s and a gusty wind and lake effect and all the typical mid-winter weather happenings maybe kind of the last raw late this week 
and into this weekend. That'll do it for me tonight. Thanks for watching this edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. I'll have a fresh update on the short range and the long range once again Tuesday evening here on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, WFMJ.com, and the Storm Tracker 21 app.